First big feature of this issue is interview with Eric Larson, who uh, took who takes over the the Spider Man duties, writing and drawing the series. This is the second time he's had to follow in Todd McFarlane's footsteps on a Spider Man comic. I had such mixed feelings on Eric Larson at this time period because I loved McFarlane, and Eric Larson was not McFarlane at all. He was much more cartoony. His his stuff was much less. Uh, noodly in in most ways. So I was not a big fan of Eric Larson at this stage, although I was reading his work. Uh, very good cartoonist, and I, I think that probably appealed to me on some level because reading his comics was easy. They were exciting. Very good cartoonist, but stylistically he was not a guy I was very into at this time. That would all change, but at the time I wasn't as big of an Eric Larson fan. The fandom for Rob Liefeld, the fandom for Todd McFarlane was almost political, spiritual. It was it was that kind of binary thing. Were you more McFarlane or more Liefeld fan? I was McFarlane. I would rank them McFarlane, Liefeld, Lee. Right. And I might put Silvestri ahead of Jim Lee. Depending on the era or Well, at, at this time, you know, I'm I'm talking specifically of this time. You know, I, I liked Mark Silvestri a lot. He moved from X Men to Wolverine as Jim Lee came on to X Men. You know, nothing against Jim Lee. I like Jim Lee's stuff a lot too, but there was an energy with Todd McFarlane and an energy with Rob Liefeld that was almost chaotic compared to Jim Lee being a little more controlled stylistically. Um, possibly a better draftsman, Jim Lee, but I liked the chaos. I liked kind of the the idiosyncrasies of guys like McFarlane. And, and quite honestly, Eric Larson had his distinct style as well, which I came to appreciate, but it was different than those guys that were like kind of cross-hatching and, and really filling every nook and cranny with some kind of mark. When I talk to the old timers who always make fun of us for our enjoyment of Todd McFarlane and Rob Liefeld comics and Jim Lee, I always have to remind them that that we were we were very young at this time. Um, when this issue came out, I would have been eight years old. I would have been fourteen. I was probably too old. I, I should have known better. Probably <laughs> there was something tangible about the work of McFarlane and Liefeld that seemed attainable, something that you could strive for. Like Jim Lee would come later. A lot of the narrative in these first couple of issues have been with artists sort of leveling up. In most cases, that means taking on some writing. Eric Larson, I think, is the best writer of many of these artists. And as I got to know more about him and his work, you know, he had been writing comics since he was a little kid. Like he was an all around cartoonist in that sense, generating his own stories. Whenever he gets to Marvel, he starts out as a penciler, penciler, inker, but that writing part was always a big chunk of his background. So I think when he starts writing with this Spider-Man series, it's pretty clear that he's a he's a more accomplished or experienced writer than a lot of the artists that make the jump to writing. Now it's hard to not think of him as being a credible writer. As he started to write more, he started to write for other people to draw also. So it's interesting in, in this interview to hear him starting to talk about that, to talk about taking on writing and ideas that he has. And the other thing from this interview is the list of projects that he's working on. I was going to actually bring that up uh, because I don't know that many of these things have seen the light of day. I think a lot is going to be happening for Eric Larson uh, very soon in the future that is going to prevent some of these projects. So he's talking about, let me just run the list off and, and you let me know if these things came out or not. Lobo miniseries. You know, man, that's the one I flagged. It did not come out. And I think he would have been great based on what he ended up doing with Savage Dragon, very cartoony, very violent. Like the perfect, ad that's what Lobo was to me. And stylistically, he's different than Bisley, but a lot of different guys have worked on Lobo. I would have loved to have seen a Lobo by Eric Larson. I think he would have been fantastic, and I think he would have brought some different direction to Lobo. He also talks about uh, Legends of the Dark Knight 3 issue piece. I don't think that ever I don't think saw so, the no. light of day. The interviewer goes on to ask Larson uh, just about his process. How detailed does he have to write a synopsis to get editorial approval? He says that it's a little bit more than a couple of sentences. It's not even a full page. You know, he knows what he wants to do. He gives the editor just a quick update to let him know that Spider-Man will not be getting de decapitated in this <laughs> issue or whatever. Yeah, I think his specific example is not ripping Spider-Man's arm, uh, is not torn off. <laughs> I do enjoy his process talk. Again, this is something that's come up in previous interviews with uh, Todd McFarlane talks about it. These different guys talk about the process, which is what I'm eating up 
you know, as a, as a youngster trying to figure out how to make comics. And he talks about very rough layouts, things that would be almost indecipherable for someone else. But if he's inking it himself, it works for him. Uh, you know, a lot of the drawing, therefore, happens in the ink stage. He talks about doing several roughs if, if there's something he can't work out. And then if those look good but don't fit the story, saving them for use elsewhere. So I enjoy seeing all of that stuff. Um, and I think, you know, one part of that is how deadline intense this work is. You know, you might do a good layout that doesn't fit this particular story or scene, but you don't throw it out. You know, that's going to be something that might save you, you know, 20 minutes down the road somewhere. I I often equate the process with being in kind of like a NASCAR pit crew where you're just trying to shave off just seconds out of uh out of your your process because compound that over 50 pages 100 pages you might save an entire earth day of your life yeah and also as a kid i always thought you had a month to make these books but as an adult and just knowing other cartoonists it's rare that you get that full you know four week schedule to work on it like things happen writers are delayed edits are made you get a lot less time for a lot of these books than the full four weeks between publication schedule. You know, you might get a book and have to turn it around in a week uh, on the art side. So that's something I didn't appreciate as a kid reading this stuff. But, you know, now I know that that was fairly normal back then. He talks a lot about Nova throughout this interview, too, which carries on, you know, going forward. Eventually he would write a Nova series. I think that was a character that was he was very fond of. That's something I would typically avoid, is having a color this solid behind black text. As time went on, I really came to appreciate his Spider-Man. You know, he was cartoony. He sort of took McFarlane's twisted up poses and maybe even pushed them a little bit further. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's a good rendition of the character. Very dynamic. <laughs> 